The United States likes the idea of being a superpower. Who wouldn't? It enjoys dominating geopolitics, determining the worth of sovereign states and their systems of governance and leveraging its heft on multilateral fora. But naturally, this pride extends to its achievements in space as well. So great was this American desire to extend its supremacy beyond Earth that it spawned the space race of the 1950s. A post-Cold War competition with the Soviet Union to reign supreme in the cosmos, but also for ideolo ideological ascendancy over communism. But that was more than five decades ago. Now the US has new competition. And surprise, surprise, they're not from the Occident. We're talking about the new kids on the block, like India, proving to be anything but a pushover. We won't hark back to longer than a week ago, when India joined the US, Russia and China to possess strategic anti-satellite capability. It was another shining moment for India's young but robust space program. And it probably caught the US off guard. That's the only way to explain this comment from NASA's administrator. Here's what we know about the most recent direct ascent anti-satellite test that was done by India. We know that we have identified 400 pieces of orbital debris from that one event. That's what's been identified. Now all of that cannot be tracked. What we are tracking right now, objects big enough to track, we're talking about 10 centimeters or bigger, about, about 60 pieces have been tracked. In other words, they've got a tracking number and, and we're able to keep, keep up with where they are. Of those 60, we know that 24 of them are going above the apogee of the International Space Station. That is a terrible, terrible thing to create an event that sends debris in an apogee that goes above the International Space Station. And that kind of activity is not compatible with the future of human space flight that we need to see have happen. Terrible, terrible, he says. So let's get this right. Mr. Bridenstine talks about 400 pieces of orbital debris from India's test, of which 60 pieces are trackable, of which 24 were identified above the International Space Station. But here's the crux of his assessment. Despite the increased risk, the astronauts are still safe. And the ISS, the International Space Station, will be maneuvered to avoid the debris if needed. It's unlikely that will be necessary. Let's also put some facts straight. In February 2008, the U.S. used a missile to destroy a bus-sized satellite 247 kilometers above the, above the ocean, the surface of the Earth. The aim was to destroy its onboard tank of toxic fuel, which could have had potential health hazards on hitting Earth. As expected, the satellite's destruction released debris and not petals to the atmosphere. In the interest of facts, let's also tell you that former ISRO scientist Professor Vice Rajan told Vion that India used the very same orbit as the US did in 2008 for its ASAT test. India has chosen the more or less the same orbit which US did on US 193 in February 2008. The same 250 kilometers. It's very tough to do it there, but it will go off in a few weeks. Out. That's not all. This July will be 50 years since the Apollo 11 mission landed on the moon. But here's a lesser known fact about the six Apollo missions that have landed on the moon. They left behind, and listen to this, these American missions left behind a total of 96 bags of human waste. That is right. The Americans left feces on the moon. And it's still there. NASA might try to tell us that the microbes in those can provide vital information on whether life can survive on the moon's brutal environment, but it was an unintended experiment, no matter what spin you put on it.